Welcome to the session on Cisco LoRaWAN by Kevin Holcomb from the IoT Business Unit. Hi, right, so I'm uh, Kevin Holcomb, a technical marketing engineer in our IoT group, focusing on LoRaWAN and on industrial asset vision. So we'll do a couple of uh, kind of short pieces today. The first is what is LoRaWAN, right? We'll go over what, what it is, then we'll talk about how it can be used in a mining environment, and then we'll talk about what Cisco has to offer for those. Um, so what is LoRaWAN? It's, it, it operates in the unlicensed spectrum, right? So in, the, in North America, it'd be like a 900 megahertz ISM band. Some other parts of the world, it's 800, all right? But it's the, it's the unlicensed um, ISM bands. Uh, you get really long coverage, right? So we're talking 15 kilometers in rural environments. You know, maybe you get um, maybe five in a, in a more urban type environment with a lot of uh, obstructions. Um, it's for low data rate. So you get this really long battery life, you know, up to 10 years on some sensors, you know, the 10 year battery life, but it's also, you get the long distance, but the trade-off is the data rate, right? So it's perfect for things like, I want to send a tank level every hour or uh, in a smart city application, is a car parked here or not, right? I'm going to send that every once in a while. Um, it's not for things like streaming video or, or for anything like that, right? You're going to get really little pieces of information at you know, little infrequent intervals, uh, but that data can be very important, um, even though it's you know, really low in, uh, in bit rate. So the, the technology itself has been around for a couple of years, well, about, probably about six or seven now, um, but it's growing rapidly, especially in the last two years. There have been a lot of... Uh, a lot of blogs and press releases and, and new um, things out there on the market around LoRa and LoRaWAN. Um, so the LoRa Alliance is kind of like the, the body that does some you know, specifications and, and tries to get everybody on the same page, right, with the technology. And so they're, now they're up to over 300 members. Um, there's a hundred, over a hundred public networks out there today. Um, you know, 200 million connected devices and, you uh, 1.6 in revenue billion. Now Cisco has been a part of the LoRa Alliance since the very beginning. So it's, you know, it's over 300 people now. So uh, we, we, we've been on board this, uh, the ride here since the very beginning. And um, along with all these other companies that you see here. Okay, so now let's, let's dive down a little deeper, like what the architecture would look like for LoRaWAN. So, on the left side of the diagram, we have sensors, right? These would be your, your sensing devices, and then we have the gateways. So Cisco sells gateways as well. And the way it works, that you have something called a network server that's there. That's kind of like the brain behind the operation, right? It would be analogous maybe to a WLC for Wi-Fi or for call manager for, for collaboration. Um, so you have the network server there, and the network server is, is the one that's he's going to receive all these messages. So when a sensor sends a message, any gateway that's around that can hear that message will actually receive it and will pass it upstream to the network server. The network server decides, you know, I, I just saw this message two other times. I received it from some other gateway, so I'm going to drop the duplicates. I'm going to keep one of them. All right, so he, the network server does that. The network server, the join server specifically, um, it handles who's allowed to get on the network encryption keys, you know, for session keys so that the data can be encrypted over the air between the, the, the LoRaWAN device and the network server. Um, so that's network server, that's, that's the brain of the operation, and then it's going to forward information up to an application server. An application server would be where you'd actually visualize the data, do ML, um, do alerting, anything like that. That's where you actually make use of the data. And there's two levels of encryption. So your, your data is safe, right? There's one la layer of encryption from the sensor up to the network server that handles all the overhead of making the LoRaWAN work, making the network work. And then there's also an, another layer of encryption um, between the sensor and the application. Okay, so places where this could be useful in, in a mining environment. This is um, a company that we've been working with on the sensor side, uh, Pygo. And they've got these, these uh, little sensors that go on the uh, trailing cable. And you can map where they're located. And I'll show you that on the next slide. 
but you can map where they are, try to avoid damage to those, right? Keep, keep them from getting run over and, and things like that. And you can get that data now. You can visualize it. You know, on a map, you can see where everything's at. Um, so that's a, a important one important application for mining. Um, other ones would be uh, things like asset tracking, right? I want to know maybe every 15 minutes or however often I want to get an update about where a piece of equipment is located. Now, it's not going to be real time in that case, right? Because if you're with lower wind, you can't send all the time. You know, you'll run the battery down. But little pieces of information every once in a while, right? So where is this where is this uh, asset located? What's at the tank level? You can monitor tank levels, um, air quality. If you need to measure air quality out in remote areas, um, all of those kinds of things are, are definitely possible with uh, with LoRaWAN as a technology. Okay, so since uh, Cisco uh, introduced the first product, which is our gateway, that was back in about 2016, 2017, um, we have about over 270 customers now in 60 countries. So we're, we're all, all over the world here with deployments. Um, so we've been at, been at this for a while. And we have a couple of different, I would say, consumption models for the technology. Right, so one, one model is, I'll cover the two on the, on the right side first. And one is, I would call it a build your own approach. Right, so those, 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 uh, that diagram we looked at earlier with the architecture, it had the different pieces, right? It had sensors, it had gateways, it had a network server and application server, those four pieces. Um, this middle one here, it's kind of a build your own approach where you or an integrator goes out and you find your sensors you know, you do all the interoperability testing, you get a gateway from Cisco, we sell gateways, you get the network server, you know, the brain of the operation, you get that through Cisco, it's actually Actility, in this case, we, we resell. And, um, and then you, you get, you send the data from that network server to whatever applications you want to, to see the data in, right? So that's, that's more of a build your own approach. You're, you know, the integrator is responsible for putting all that together, making sure it all works together and make sure it, it functions properly. Um, that is available um, as a, you know, a SaaS model for the network server or for an on-prem model, if you wanted to do that. And then of course you get the, the IXM gateway from Cisco and you get the network server from Cisco. We have another model where you get the gateway. It's, it's also a build your own model. It's the one on the right there, third party network server, where we have something called common packet forwarder, which allows uh, our gateway to communicate with any uh, network server that also supports basic SimTech basic station. Right, so again, it's, it's, a, it's a build your own approach. You're putting all these, these pieces together. And then over on the left, which we'll dive into a little deeper, is Cisco Industrial Asset Vision. So that's a fairly uh, new product uh, offering. And in that model, if we look, think back to that architecture diagram we saw a few minutes ago, um, that whole diagram becomes Cisco at that point, right? So there's Cisco sensors you buy from Cisco, there's the Cisco gateway, the network server, um, you don't even have to know what a network server is um, because it's, it's abstracted away up in the Asset Vision cloud and um, you never really interact with it. So we have an application dashboard. Uh, we as an, an asset vision, we have an application dashboard and you see all your data comes into there and it's all like based on barcode scans to, uh, to get sensors and, and gateways into the system. No CLI, um, so it's very, really streamlined. It's just like I have assets, I wanna get data about those assets, what's the quickest way to do it? without having to do a lot of interoperability and integration work. Okay. So this is the LoRaWAN gateway. Uh, this is our, our, we call it it's IXM. So it's IP67, it's very, it's very rugged. Um, dual power input, you can do geolocation. Um, so people put this you know, sometimes indoors, uh, but a lot of times outdoors on a rooftop or on a tower be at the top of a mine, uh, something like that. I'm um, a really rugged product, really, very rugged. 
Okay, so now let's cover that, that industrial asset vision piece. So that gateway, that, that gets used in all the consumption models from Cisco, right? Whether you're doing the third-party network server, the actility one, or asset vision, you always would have that gateway. Um, but when we get into, you know, what do you do with the data and the sensors? So now we'll introduce industrial asset vision, um, which it's all cloud managed. It's um, really easy to use. And we call it, we call it our full stack solution because it's Cisco offers all the pieces, right? So you got the sensors, you got the gateways and all the rest of it's abstracted away in the cloud. So today we have 10 sensors. And I'll show you those on this next slide here. So we have light level, outdoor temperature, indoor temp, um, you know, occupancy, door window, all these ones shown here. The, the one that's probably most applicable to mining today, I would say would probably be the outdoor temp if you wanted to measure that out in a remote area um, and geolocation, because you can use that, um, you can use the geolocation when to, to track anything. Really, so every 15 minutes or so, you get a, an update for, for where that's located. Now, we'll mention two sensors we're working on now, which would probably be very applicable to, to mining. Um, one is a, a vibration sensor, which could be used on, on conveyor motors and things like that, you know, to periodically monitor the vibration on those. And then you can look for trends, like if you know, if you, or if it crosses a threshold or if the vibration, if the acceleration is slowly increasing right over time, you can try to catch things that are breaking before they actually break. Um, so the vibration would, would be a good one. And we're also working on one, I call it like a generic bridge sensor because it would have analog or digital inputs on one side. And on the other side, it has LoRaWAN and that data comes into industrial asset vision. So think a four to 20 milliamp sensor or a voltage out sensor, one to five, zero to 10, whatever it might be. So when we introduce that one, the possibilities are almost limitless as to what can be sensed out there in the environment because there's so many, almost everything you can think of, tank level, whatever it might be, you know, there's four to 20 milliamp sensors for, for all of those things. So then you'd be able to get that data in. Just a question that came in kind of relative to um, sensor data and whatnot. It's around um, storing of data. So, for example, the question is, do you provide storing option if your network server is cloud-based? So if the WAN goes down and stores the data, and when the WAN is restored, all data is forwarded to the cloud. Is there any kind of option in that sense? Got it. Not today. Not today. So if, if the link to the cloud did go down today, you would you would – you'd lose whatever information was to go across that link during the time it was down. Yeah. So that, that would be an IAV solution, right? I mean, if you had your own homegrown solution with a network server on-prem, the network server would buffer that, right? But uh, the yeah. gate, does the gateway, the gateway doesn't really buffer though, what you're saying. Um, yeah, so if you go with the build your own approach, right? So you're using say the Actility Network Server, for instance, yeah. um, there is buffering capability. So right. whether it's in the cloud or on-prem, you could buffer data there in the gateway. And when the WAN came back, that data would all get, get piped out. Yeah. Um, but specific to the asset vision. The amount of buffering. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. And for the it, asset vision solution, we, we, don't, we don't buffer today for asset vision. Okay. The build your own approach, we, we do. And Kevin, there is one more question that just came in. Do we have uh, any sort of partnership uh, with the carriers? For the for the managed services, that that does come up from time to time, yeah. And there and there are some some service providers, um, like in the U.S., we've been working with some where they deploy, you know, they manage a, a, a network, right? They manage this like a like a service provider would, and then people can bring their sensors in and, and connect those. Yeah. And we do have some partners that are specific to use cases where they manage the whole thing for the customer. I don't know if you're going to be talking about any of those or not, but um, specific to mining, we've had a few like that. So, yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and so for, for industrial asset vision, I have to differentiate between, there's some differences between the build your own approach and the, the asset vision approach, right? But I think the main takeaway is no matter what kind of consumption model you want to achieve, we, we have something for, for every for every model, 
right? Um, so for the industrial asset vision, we got this the one dashboard centralized. All your data comes into there. You can set up alerting, um, single pane of glass, and um, you can get all your notica- notifications from there. And the data also can be exported out, right? So we don't the data doesn't come into asset vision, and then we charge you a bunch of money to get it out. Right. You can actually we can export the data through MQTT, Azure IoT Hub or REST APIs. And you can you can asset vision then becomes a way to easily get the data, pass it to your system for your workflow. And then you can do whatever you need to do with it from there. Um, And it is a it's a per sensor per month charge just to use, you know, to use the asset vision service. Um, When it comes to deploying sensors. And gateways, it's all based on this mobile installer app. So the mobile installer goes out with your smartphone, you scan a QR code or a barcode, you turn the sensor on, it's literally about a 30 second process, you know, to get a new sensor um, into the system. And, you know, it scales really well. You can get started with just a few sensors and then you can add new sensors as you need to. There's no like minimum order quantity or anything like that. You don't have to buy big blocks of, uh, of sensor subscriptions. Um, so it's really easy and it's you know, Cisco support, uh, Cisco secure. If you have a problem with anything, you call TAC, right? It's whether it's a sensor or a gateway or anything. So that, that's where we were going with asset vision. And it's uh, it's just a different consumption model. Some people, some people like to have that more turnkey solution but then some people uh, don't want to do that because maybe they, they need to have on-prem or they want to have complete flexibility in the sensors that they can use. Whereas with Asset Vision, we're more targeted on specific use cases and making sure it's turnkey. Um, so that's usually the, the kind of the, the data points that decide whether somebody goes with the build your own approach or the Asset Vision approach. But I think when it comes to LoRaWAN, we, we've got it covered no matter, no matter how you want to, to slice it. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for joining us for the LoRaWAN session. Next up is our 5G as a service session. Click on the next video to join us for that.